Expo Hope. Everyone's doing good. Um, international break again. About to come out of a little video yet. I'm really interested, having time to sit back and, I guess, review what's gone on so far this season, just before the final running. I'm interested in, in who, the, who have been the best players for Leeds United. So what I've done in this video is I've, I've sectioned it down to three. And that's right now. This is not players of the years. This is in no order, by the way. This is in no particular order. I've just chosen the three. And the three players I believe have been the best players for Leeds United this season so far before that final running. I'll show who's in contention as well, because that could change. Um, but yeah, without any further ado, a bit of fun this one. I'm not going into too much deep detail, don't worry about it. A bit of fun. Um, yeah, let's get into it. One of the three is probably no shock, and this was tough choosing a three, by the way. First one I've chose, and again, no order. This is just really in the order I did it. Joe Rodon. I just think this season... In a position where, let's be honest, we are really short. We don't have a lot of depth. We've relied so much. And again, a lot of playing has been reliable, been, been, been able, been available to play, right? And he has been for almost every game, bar the one where I believe the red card happened. So that is one thing that's a tick. That always been reliable, that never really dropping your standard through that. Playing two, three times within seven or eight days and being consistent throughout. You're not really having a massive drop in form, not never really having a dip, maybe one or two games where you weren't quite at your top. But that is a big aspect for me. And Joe Rodon, along with the other two in this, have probably been the most available for Leeds United. And that is key from start to finish, from when he came in to now, doing what you're required to do for the team and more, and as well as putting up the numbers for the team every week. Um, for me, that stands out, and that's what makes you effective over a 46-game season. You know, it's not players that have done well for a 10-game period. It's a player that's done well for 40-plus games. And that's something that you can't really discriminate against with these players. They've absolutely destroyed it in that sense, and the numbers back it. A quick look here, and look. Defensive duels won in the championship for defend central defenders this season. And I've gone players that have played more than 20 games because obviously that's around half. Yeah, I don't want to get players that have played 10 because the numbers are not skewed and they've not been available for their sides. I want players that are available and have played most weeks. 79% defensive duels won in the championship this season. More than any other centre-back that's played over 20 games. I think that speaks for itself. That's just at the top here. Top of the tree. For a team that relies on possession, for a team that relies on, you know, not really getting in those battles, it's important that when you do get into those battles that you're effective and you win them. Joe Rodan's won 79% of his defensive duels this season. You know, with an aerial duels of 63%, that's all right. I think it's top 15, top 10. But that defensive duels is huge for Leeds. 79% is ridiculous, by the way as you can see by the numbers. And then you look at passing stats, again in a possession-based system, and this is all, like I said, this is basic analysis. I'm not going into too much detail. Look at accurate passes here. Is what? Fifth in the championship. Again, the same criteria. For central defenders with a 92% pass success rate. Very solid. And again, the guys above him, you look at the four, the four names above him, they're not above him in defensive duels. So where they might be slightly better at maintaining the ball and finding a guy with a pass, and again, that's system base too, they're not up there with the defensive duels. Joe Rodon has both those attributes, and that's why he has to be one of our better players. He has to be key for us this season. He has to have been key for us. He really has. An outstanding player for Leeds United this season, Joe Rodon. There's no denying that. Just, just in terms of visuals and watching him, you know, watching him on the pitch, watching him on the ball, blocking shots, you know, wearing the heart in his sleeve, last-ditch tackles, being in front of everything. Him and Ampadu, that partnership, that key central defensive partnership that's just seen as have an unbelievable defensive record, especially since January. Um, I want to shout out Pascal as well. I feel like he's been left. Pascal has been excellent. And I have no doubt that if Pascal was part of this defence, 
to its numbers would be very similar because he has been brilliant this season. Um, as Pascal Strout, absolutely no doubt. But yeah, Joe Rodon has been elite at this level. He really has. He's been unbelievable. Everything says that. Next one, let's go. Crescencio is the next. Again, no order. These are just two players I believe have been the best so far. That could change. Why? And I mean, before we get into it, we all know why. I believe he's got 15 goals and 8 assists this season. That's a key kind of pillar in his in this house, I guess. The numbers are ridiculous. But any in any league at any level, doing that in his kind of first full season where he's relied on as that starting winger, one of the best players, if not the best player in the side, in the league even. That's pressure. It should be, but not to this guy. And again, here are the championship numbers, total goals, sitting fourth as a winger. Again, Morgan Whitaker's up there, Armstrong's up there, Smodix is up there, striker, striker, Whitaker, winger, obviously, but doesn't have the assist numbers that some of them has either. And Jack, you can't see Jack Clark just behind him, Jimmy Vardy up there. Really impressive in terms of numbers, there's absolutely no doubt about that. When we look at expected goals plus expected assists per 90, he sits fourth in the league. He's really key. He's a real key aspect as part of our build-up, as part of our, you know, our final four, our goal-scoring form. He's a really key guy in that, if not the key player. He's been so reliant this season. There's a point where I've been, I think we've been too reliant in games. And now we're kind of finding a way with Nonto coming through and Dan James on the other side playing excellent. But we're not being so reliant on him in these games where you might feel a bit tired. The championship, in his first year of it, is kind of catching up 2-3% to him at times. Maybe the balls, the shots he usually has, just not quite going in. The keeps are making great saves. It's hitting the post. It's going slightly wide. This is the reliance of the team. It's not a career problem. You can't expect. It's so unrealistic to expect a player to score and assist in every game like he has been for a certain period throughout this season. It doesn't happen. Very, very rarely happens, if ever. It's ridiculous. It's good that even in the games he's not, he's still been a part. He's still learning to be a part of the build-up in a different way. Maybe he has to come deeper. Maybe he has to play more central, find different pockets. And he's doing that, people. Again, here he is with the assists as well. Just below my head, you can't actually see. There he is. Seven assists, 15 goals in the championship. Again, look at the names up there. Armstrong is probably the only one that sits above him in both categories. Attacking stats based on his percentiles, based on FB ref. Now again, just to clarify, FB ref is player compared to a positional peers, so players in the same position as him, in the men's next 14 competitions of the last 365 days. Okay, so all the similar leagues, top 14 leagues, similar minutes over the last 365 days. These are the numbers, and this is where he categorised in terms of percentiles with those other players. And what's key is there is a lot of greens, obviously. But it's the consistency throughout the possession and the passing side of it, the dribbling side of it, and the creation, which shows you know, there's a dynamic side to his game. Wingers are often one-dimensional. They're good at one thing, and that's what they're really good at. But Cree, you know, shot creating actions, assists, uh, non-penalty non expected goals and expected assists, the percentiles are huge in that category. And then you look at the take-ons and you look at the progressive carries, the progressive stats. He has the progression, the dribbling side of it. The creation side is there. The carries and the dribbling and the progressive side is there. But then the passing side is there. The only one that isn't really there is crosses. It doesn't cross. We don't do that really, do we? That's usually from the fullbacks. Touches, progressive passes. Passes into penalty area. Key passes, 96. He has those key passes. He has those assists. He has that side to his games. He can be part of a build-up. He's not just a one-man band. He's an all-around winger. Kind of complete in that sense. And you can see it down here as well, all the numbers. I just want to do something really quick and show you guys this. Just looking at there, the percentiles, the percentiles of the shooting. All up there. All up there. Passing. All up there. Apart from long passes. 
wow, or crosses. Pass completion long. We don't care about that. It's not our game. That's not what he does. Everything is needed. Is there. Goal and shot creation. Everything is there. And, and just a little key aspects of his game that make him more effective when he's not quite getting those goals is stuff like this. Fouls drawn that lead to a short attempt. Defensive actions that lead to a short attempt. Successful take-ons that lead to a short attempt. Completed dead ball passes that lead to a short attempt. And you've got completed live ball passes that lead to a short attempt. And again, fouls drawn that lead to a goal. There's so many different parts of his player that even when he's not maybe destroying the, the, the stats in terms of goals scored in the last kind of six, seven games, he's still involved massively in that build-up. And that's a key part of it that we're not really speaking about and people don't really see. And that's what I'm trying to show you right now. I mean, look at the total carries, the carry distances, aggressive carries, the carries into the final third, the carries into the penalty area. These are ridiculous numbers, people. The percentiles are ridiculous. So yeah, Chris Somerville is definitely in there. Definitely, 100%. I don't think anyone's disagreeing. I just get passionate about these things. Final one is my boy here, pointing at his name. Look, I know there's one or two missing out. I'll get into them in a minute. Ethan Ampadu has been a joke this season. I just want to talk about watching him real quick. The game is too easy at this level for him. Genuinely looks like a player that we've kind of just, but we have, you know, and can we have him for a little bit? He's quite good. I've gone, yeah, go on then. Just for a bit though. Like a loan, but a really good one. Look. I think this guy is absolutely huge for these United. What I love about him as well is he's took that armband and it's not affected this game. That is a huge thing. He's showing that side in such a young guy. He's 23. So much other aspects to his game that make him a better player and this is the key it's not all these players i'm showing are not one dimensional they're good at their job but there's other aspects of their role that they're really good at too like with Cree, the creation side of it but this guy is just everything the retention the calmness the understanding of the game he's all there the defensive side of it it's all there the leadership but everything that you need a player to have in your team we're crying out for this type of player last season this type of leadership all these guys Apart from maybe Somerville, who was younger than these guys, and, and an attacking player, you know, you want then defensive solid players that have that mentality, that winning mentality. We miss them, Rodon and Amp. We miss those type of players. Again, just comparing in midfield and defence, it was hard to do a thing on this guy because statistical analysis, because again, he's played half a centre back, half midfield, so it's kind of hard to do, differentiate. But just look at the consistency in each position. This is centre back, and this is defensive midfield. Again, the numbers are all there. And again, when it says tackles, this is number attempt. This is this is number. This is not percentage of successful tackles, by the way. This is just the number of tackles. The successful tackles is very high. You'll see that in a second. Percentage of ta dribbles tackled right there. 99 percentile. And again, it's the same criteria we should have. Somerville, similar minutes, the top 14 leagues in that position. 99%. The top, the top 1%. Doesn't tackle a lot in that central midfield area. Doesn't attempt a lot, sorry. But when he attempts, he wins it. That's key. He wins it. And the consistency throughout these stats, you know, look at the jewels one there, the aerial jewels and everything. Shots blocked. Another key one. And then at centre back. Just all rounded. All rounded at centre back. Solid in every aspect. Apart from clearances, because again, we don't do that. Yeah. Really impressive. All round from Ethan Ampadu. He's genuinely one of the, in terms of the transition to the Premier League, he's probably the most seamless. Genuinely, I believe that. It's all around game, his IQ, the way he plays the game, makes everything equal and, and, and simple and defined. You know, he gets the ball, he knows, right, as soon as I get it, he's getting it. I move here, that goes there. He understands the move in his brain, he understands where the ball's going, where it should go. The decision to make the passes is always right. There's no one that's been more consistent this season. I genuinely can't. I'm, I can't think of a bad game. I think the lowest rating I give him is a six. And before and after that, they've all been seven or higher, I believe, because he's been ridiculous. And the games that have given lowest probably because he's been quiet because he had nothing to do. 
in the small moments he has had things to do. It's an example. He's done it with effectiveness and efficiency. Again, that partnership with Rodon, that transition from centre midfield to centre back, when required, when needed for your team, seamless. The goals conceded is a joke. Nothing comes through the middle of them two. Nothing. They snuff it out. One of them does it. Ampadu or Rodon. One of them sees that. They're both quick. They can both recover the fullbacks if they need. They can both sit centrally if they need. 1v1 duels, fine. They're so all rounded. And Ethan Ampadu took that armband. And Pascal Strout, obviously, with his injury. And he's just it's been seamless for him. His guidance, he's, he, this guy's ready to attack the Prem. He really is. He's just getting us through this. He's ready to attack the Prem. I can't wait to see him in the Prem. I really can't. Obviously, at centre center defensive midfield is where I prefer him in the Premier League, obviously. I think the physical battles in there, the, the, the speed up against the strikers, he's just really, really tough. But we'll see. But anyway, don't matter about that right now, does it? Right now, he's doing what it needs for the team, and he's doing an excellent job. Unbelievable job. Definitely top three, without a doubt. I know what you're all saying. Look, these are some honourable mentions. I've not put Willie near just based on the fact he hasn't played enough for me to be mentioned in this, this four. Virginia Rutter was really close. Ask yourself this. Who are you taking out? If, you, if people are screaming, put Rutter in, who are you taking out? You're not taking some of them out. You just can't. I know that he's had a quiet four or five games in that sense, in terms of goal scoring, but his, his numbers are ridiculous. He's got us through so many games this season. And the stats show how key he's been for us. Sorry, I haven't got to talk about Rutter. Yeah, I just can't put him in for... It's really tough. If it was five, he would be in it. It would be four. And I was struggling for a fourth. I really was. I just couldn't take him out. I just couldn't take any of them out. I really couldn't. Jorginho's ceiling for me is the highest in this side. I really do believe that. But he's still so raw. And this is not new. I said this, go back to my original video where I bigged him up and said how he's going to fit in the system. I said he's going to frustrate people. He's going to give the ball away a lot. Because this is a learning year for him. This is about really defining and understanding his game as that number 10. Not as a striker or off the striker anymore. As a number 10. I still, I, I still think there's a winger in there too. I genuinely do. Look, every time he goes wide, he looks effective for me. I still, I said that earlier in my video. I still think that's the thing. But right now, as a ten, I'm loving it. But it's just, it's, it's the small amounts of, of just effectiveness that are off the other three for me. And it's, you know, the dribbling's ridiculous. But at first touch at times, he tries too early to take a guy on. Where at times he needs to just, just secure the ball. The first touch is right. The ball's in front of me. That's your first touch. Ready, go. Because you can still beat them. Because you're that good. The passing as well, I think the pass percentage is really 60%, which isn't great. That can be up to 20%, 15%. I know he does a lot of risky passes. And the assists are there. But it's that, that middle play where you really have to be, you know, kind of find in there and quite, quite simple with your play at times. And again, this will come with learning. This will come with age. 21 years old, there's plenty of time to develop. This is it. I think they're slightly ahead in their development of where they are as players, as how they identify as players. Whereas Rutter's in that year, I think Korea that year last year, Rutter's having that year that this year, where he's really understanding who he is as a player, what he can do in certain areas, and how he can learn to become better. Because if this guy gets 10% better for the Premier League next year, be ready. And I think he will. I love this guy. If, if it's about, like, personality and even raw talent, he's obviously <laughs> number one. I just think he's ridiculous in that sense. He, he, he's literally 5 10% off being... This, is, this might be wild. I genuinely think he's 10% off being elite. Like, looking at teams around the world, some of the best teams, how far is he off getting in there 15 and I, I don't think far. I think cleaning up his play, learning to secure that ball, and of course the finishing side of it has to improve. It's getting assists, assists, assists. But to get to that elite level, you have to improve that. Or the composure in front of goal. Just pass it. You know, that's it. Just pass it into goal. Don't try and always hit it hard. Just pass it. That is, he's that close to me. There's two or three things he's changing his game that I think he will very soon. And for me, he's, he's elite. 
I say elite, I don't mean world class, by the way. Let me clarify. I mean, getting into a 15 of Bayern Munich, um, a Borussia Dortmund, you know, those type of teams. Athletic Madrid, those type of teams. The unbelievable talent who could genuinely go right to the top. Dan James, I don't want to leave this video too long. Dan James has been ridiculous. Again, there's a question about Dan James in the Premier League. And again, I'm not going to sit here and say we don't need to improve in that area. Of course we do. I think we need to bring in a lot of players. Right? I love these players. But I don't want risks. Good recruitment. Not spend, we don't have to spend loads in each position. But getting key aspects. Improvement in each area is key. James just looks a better player. And I know it's the championship, but, but I'm, I'm not talking about the league-specific roles. I'm talking about him as a player, the way he hits the ball, the positions he finds himself in, his efficiency in front of goal. The rashness he used to hit a ball with, he's calm. He's finding the net, he's finding corners. In front of goal, everything's clearer to him now. And this is not a championship trait, people. This is an individual mindset trait. He looks better as a player in terms of those moments in front of goal where you're calm. How he strikes the ball, his movement, the decision of when to run, where to run. His efficiency on the ball, trying less things that make you lose the ball, being more defined in your play. If anything, a really good squad option to have if we go to the Premier League, 100%. Because he's defined his play to be more effective in moments. It doesn't matter what league you're in when you're that quick and you're always going to be quicker than the fullback next year. You're always going to know where the gaps are. You're always going to be calm in front of goal. And that's what he's defined for me. But again, he got took out of the team. Can't really put him in. If he, if he stayed in the team and he kept doing it, doing it, doing it, he would 100% be in there. 100%. Archer Gray has been unbelievable. I'm not going to talk too much about Archer Gray because I've done that too much this season and he's still young. You remember that. There's a lot of media stuff going on with him and rightly so he deserves it. But I'm just going to, yeah, he's been unbelievable. One of our most consistent performers. Really adapted well in that position. Sky's the limit for this kid. Sky is the limit, 100%. Two years, could probably play wherever he wants. But right now he's with us and hopefully stays with us. Hopefully we can meet his ambitions and his expectations of wanting to play at the top, hopefully. Unbelievable player for us this season. Glenn Kamara. Glenn Kamara gets stick. And you know the thing about that is it's the way, it's the position he plays. It's not the most expressive position. And there is times, and I've shown that in videos, where I believe there could be more rotation or quicker rotation in midfield, and him and Gruev, or even Ampadu at times originally, are part of that rotation. Create spaces and create more gaps for the front four. And again, that forward passing thing, that is a thing, but I don't know if that's systematic because Gruev also does it. For me, Glenn Kamara's work rate and his just overall ability to maintain possession, win back possession, and just be a solid influence on the pitch in every area to maintain the ball is a key part of the possession side. And he's been key for that. He's had two or three performances where he's dropped. But as a overall season, and when he came in, I think he's been unbelievable. Overall, in this league, he's been unbelievable. I really do that. I really do think that. So I can calculate on the ball. The progression side of it is interesting because I don't know if that's enough. I don't know if that's a system thing because all the midfielders do. But yeah. Those are the guys. Look, not no, I get that. But again, he's just come in really well. Few months, it's hard to really say he's in the race for the player of the year. Mesley has been solid but again, not a whole amount of do. Definitely improved throughout the season. Fullbacks, uh, got actually there. Firpo, yeah, since he's came in, has been good. Byron, again, when he was playing the start of the season, was very effective. Um, Bamford, since he's come in, has been good. Hero scored a lot of goals, but again, not performed at a level where he's been the most effective player for us in terms of the overall 90 minutes. Who have I forgotten? There's a few more. Anthony, again, not played as much. But again, still been good in moments. Yeah, there's loads. Ruev, obviously, again, not played from the start. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Again, this was no order, it's just a bit of fun. I don't know, you guys think you're your top three. And if, if you are changing the top three, ask yourself, how can you take one of them out? That's what I was trying to do. I wanted to put Ruru in. I really did want to put Ruru in. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. I appreciate the support. Peace.